I know I haven't done any hard intercourse with you guys for a while now, so I have this one right here for you guys today. And I know many of you guys want to try this first, so please pause the video and try this first. But if you don't want to pause the video and try it, okay, let's get started with this. First, let me just mention, if we don't have the square here, then this integral will diverge. So thanks to the square here. And let me also tell you, it's not possible to find antiderivative for this function. So don't even think about it. So how do we do it though? Hmm. We see this is the integral going from 0 to infinity. So maybe we can use Feynman's technique of integration. But that's not what I did. Because on the bottom, we have t squared. However, if you did do the Feynman's technique of integration, you can leave a comment down below and let me know how it goes. This is what I did. Let me tell you. In fact, sometimes we can turn an integral into a double integral. And if that double integral is nice enough, we can just compute it. That's what I did. So to do so, we are going to first focus on the inner part right here. And we want to think about what definite integral that we can use to replace that. So remember, definite integral is integral going from a to b of some function. And then we have to first find its antiderivative and then plug in b, subtract plug in a. So we have the subtraction, that's nice. And uh, we have e to the negative t. The one looks like we have e to the zero. And I can write this as e to the negative zero times t, yeah? And then just continue, minus e, and then minus, maybe we can put one here, and then times t over t. So the limits should be from zero to one. What's the function though? Hmm. Let's replace the zero and one with another variable that's called the x. So let's look at e to the negative x t, and the important thing here is to know that we will have to integrate this in the x world. That way, when we integrate this, we first repeat that. And then negative t will be the constant in the x world. So we will have to divide it by it. So 1 over negative t. And you see, this is how we can bring the t to the bottom. Very nice, huh? And then let's go from 0 to 1. And let's just double check to see if this will work or not. Plugging 1, plugging 0, and subtract. 1 over negative t, e to the negative 1t, minus plugging 0, 1 over negative t. e to the 0 is just 1, so it doesn't matter. Now check this out. This is positive 1 over t. Let's write that down first. And then minus, we have this on the top over t. And isn't this the same as that? Yes. So we have found a definite integral that we can use to replace the inner part. Let's just go ahead and do so. And you might be wondering, wow, we are just creating more integrals. Is this a good idea? Uh, let's just hope for the best. So now that's what we have. Now, what can we do next though? Notice, this is to the second power, so that means we have this integral times itself, right? But you will feel like the following is going to be very similar to the classic way to solve the Gaussian integral. Let me write this down again. Integral going from 0 to 1, e to the negative x t dt. So at dx, earlier we used x for the dummy variable, but I can also use another dummy variable. Let's say y. And they will be equal, because remember this right here is just going to give us a number, and this right here will give us the same number. So instead of writing down the same thing twice, I'm going to put down this times that to replace this thing squared. So we will still have the integral going from 0 to infinity on the outside. And then for this part is integral going from 0 to 1, e to the negative x t dx. And then we multiply by integral going from 0 to 1, e to the negative y t, and then dy. And then lastly, 
close down with the DT. Very similar to the classic rig of the Gaussian integral, right? No part though. We'll notice that they both go from 0 to 1, and they both have e for the base, so we can just combine them. So, integral going from 0 to infinity, I will just write down 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1, e, we just have to add the exponents, let me factor out the t and also the negative, let me write e as negative x plus y t, and I will put down dx first, and then dy, and lastly dt, just like that. Whew. What do we do next though? Well, if you look at this function, wouldn't it be nice if we can integrate in the t world first? Because x plus y is just a constant in the t world. And yes, let's just do that. Thanks to Fabini, we can totally change the order of this integral. So I'm just going to write it integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, and then 0 to infinity. Let's look at e to the negative x plus y t dt and then dx dy. Now, let me just write down some notes for you guys. Note, if we integrate from 0 to infinity of e to a negative some constant, let's say k, t like this, First, we will just keep e to the negative kt, but we will have to divide it by the negative k, and then we plug in, plug in, right? Plug in infinity, we get e to the infinity, negative infinity, it's just going to be 0. And then minus, plug in 0 here, e to the 0 is just 1, so we just have 1 over negative k. So all in all, we will just end up with 1 over k. And that's very nice. Because in our situation here, this is just like the k here. Therefore, we can write this integral as the integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. For that, it's just 1 over x plus y, and then dx dy. And thankfully, we can totally integrate this, just this one step at a time. Okay, let's just do it. Keep the integral on the outside. Integrating 1 over x to the first power plus a constant in the x world, we get natural log. No need for absolute value, because we're just going to go from 0 to 1, and that's the x. I right, plug in 1, plug in 0, and subtract. So ln 1 plus y minus ln y dy. Alright, now, can we integrate ln of 1 plus y? And can we integrate on y? Sure thing, with integration by parts. And I'm just going to tell you guys the formula for that. If we integrate ln, let's say u, in the u world, we will just get u ln u minus u. Don't worry about the plus c here. So have a look, this is like our u, so we will first get 1 plus y, ln 1 plus y, and then minus 1 plus y. So that's for this part. Then we will have to subtract this part, it's just going to be y, ln y, minus y. But minus here, minus times this minus, this will be a plus. Yeah. And then we go from 0 to 1. Now, plugging 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then ln 2 again. Plugging 1, that's minus 2. Plugging 1, ln 1 is 0, so this part doesn't matter. Plugging 1 here, so plus 1. So that's the first part. Then minus, plugging 0, ln 1 right here will be 0, so this is out. Plugging 0 will have minus 1. And then plugging 0 here, we have 0 times ln 0, well, we have to talk about limits. For this right here, one more note for you guys. Because this right here is technically taking the limit as, x, as y approaching 0 plus. If we have the limit as y approaching 0 plus of y ln y, 
we will actually get zero. To do so, we can put this y as 1 over 1 over y. That way you can use L'Hopital's rule. And then you end up with zero, you can go ahead and try that on your own. But that will give us zero, so it doesn't matter. Lastly, put zero here, it doesn't matter. So, what do we have next? Minus 2, plus 1, plus 1, they're just going to be zero. So we just have 2, ln2, and perhaps we can put a 2 to the power here, and then get ln of 2 to the second power, and that will be ln4. That's the answer. Yeah. And guess what? If you have the third power here, you can just go ahead and do this, this, and then maybe one more with z. If you have the 17th power, just do it 17 times, 17 integrals. But the integration of ln like 16, 17 times it will be horrendous. But anyway, that's it.